Good evening and welcome to LL Fumar Takes. This is our 71st take live from Euless, Texas. I'm your host as always, Bear Duplessis, and I'm so excited to welcome you all in tonight. We're going to have a fantastic show. Uh, got a very special guest. This is uh, this is going to be a little bit different tonight because um, I'm while I have had members of the Cigar Media in the past, this is going to be I know it's kind of unusual, a different take for us tonight. So I, I'm really excited to have our guests. But before we get into them, got to take care of our absolutely fantastic sponsors. Uh, we couldn't be anywhere without them. And tonight's show, of course, is sponsored by Drew Estate. The Drew Estate story is one of daring, heartbreak, and success, but most of all, one of passion for cigars and the country of Nicaragua, where they have been making cigars since 1998. Jonathan Drew and Marvin Samel, they are not your average cigar makers. Their story doesn't start in Cuba or with fathers in the cigar business. It started with a dream and through their can-do attitude and never say die spirit, they made Drew Estate one of the premier cigar manufacturers on the planet. And this week they released to Drew Diplomat retailers, the Herrera Esteli Miami in, yep, you've heard it, five different Vitolas. So check it out. Crafted by level nine Cuban rollers at the prestigious and famed El Teton de Bronze factory on Calle Ocho in Little Havana in Miami. It is an exquisite blend that you definitely want to try from Drew Estate. So, and also if you guys are watching us on YouTube tonight, really appreciate it. This is the live broadcast, of course, but we do want to thank everyone who does download and tune in over the course of the week and weeks. Um, you can listen to this show anywhere you listen to podcasts, uh, everywhere from Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Google Play, Podbeam, everything, you name it, you've got it. It's going to be live on those, well, live at the time, recorded later podcasts. And if you are listening to us uh, on your favorite podcast uh, format, you are listening to us exclusively because of Cornelius and Anthony Premium Cigars. Cornelius and Anthony Premium Cigars is steeped in tobacco tradition for over 150 years. The Bailey family has been a part of America's tobacco heritage, passionately caring for the land they cultivate in Keysville, Virginia. Cornelius and Anthony's devotion to the finest grown tobacco and foremost aspects of craftsmanship allows them to introduce the most exquisite cigars to the market. They invite you to enjoy their portfolio of premium hand-rolled cigars and experience their dedication to producing an exceptional product. So we thank our sponsors for this evening. Really, really appreciate my guest who is decided to uh, take a break from his very, very busy life up north and uh, his newest and latest project, which we'll be getting into. I uh, want to welcome in Matt Ty of How About That Cigar? Matt, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Bear. How are you? Oh, man, it has been a week. Uh, it's been an absolute week. You know, baseball got started, and I'm not ditching the Red Sox. They had a terrible opening series. But if I've got Matt Ty on my show, i got to represent our one common and love, true love, the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, yeah. The uh, We'll see how it goes. I mean, it's, you know, we're still uh, not even to the draft yet, so we'll, yes. we'll see <laughs> how it goes, but... You know, got a couple lost, questions we, we lost some great ones but you know maybe we'll pick up some new great ones along the way it's not even the great ones that we lost like a couple of our great ones also retired they hadn't been with us for a couple of years yeah but they also yeah. retired so i was i'm thinking okay tj lang gets cut jordy nelson gets cut i'm like oh welcome back boys they're <laughs> like no nope, we're we quit we're done yeah yeah <laughs> like, they, they actually meant it when they retired unlike brett Favre. Yes, that's true. They, they, it's, it's funny how, it's funny how everyone else like, like doesn't even want to play with it. Like I, I, I seriously doubt that if anyone retires as a Packer going forward, they're like, they're for certain. Cause they don't yeah. want the Brett Favre comparisons. Yeah. They don't, they don't want to put that same circus together. So, um, Matt, really, really excited to have you on the show. And, uh, before we get kicked off, I, I want to give uh, a shout out to. We were talking a little bit about before the show. You're 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 kind of uh, double fist and drinking a couple of different beverages tonight, oh, yeah. and uh, wanted to uh, spotlight a couple of those those folks. So, tell me a little bit about that beer that you just uh, you just took a sip of. So I'm um, I'm drinking. I, I wanted to drink some local stuff just because. I mean, I always drink local stuff, um, but since I was going to be on with you, I wanted to kind of showcase that I live in uh, Minnesota in the just north of the Twin Cities area. And I work, I actually work in downtown Minneapolis. And this is from uh, Indeed Brewery in Minneapolis. It's called their Stir Crazy Porter. I'm, I'm a huge fan of porters and stouts. 
Uh, and this one's very. You're very from up north. Uh, I think it's kind of. I think it's required, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. It's. I think. I think it's part of. Uh, it's. It's stamped on your birth certificate. Yeah, must uh, must I like porters. I wasn't born and raised up here, but but I've just always had a, um, a, a love with porters and stouts. And then, oh, where are you from? So uh, born and raised in Indiana, actually. Okay. Then, then I moved to uh, I moved to Wisconsin in '91. Lived there for about eight years. And then uh, met my wife. She and I were both going to college in Wisconsin. And she was born and raised here where we live, which is Forest Lake, Minnesota, which is just north of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Well, she got to Wisconsin as fast as she could. So that's good. She's not a Vikings fan, is she? God forbid. No, no. Oh, thank God. No. no. Oh, you married. You did well, sir. (laughs) So I, I, like I said, I grew up in Indiana and I was already, you know, a teenager by the time the Colts moved in and i didn't really care i mean i was sort of a bengals fan and a reds fan because we lived down by uh the cincinnati area so did go to bengals games and and reds games when i was a kid and um but then i just sort of fell out of favor with sports in general and then you you move to wisconsin and it when you get your driver's license changed over to a wisconsin driver's license you also get a packer hat and a t-shirt and (laughs) It, it's it just kind of comes with the territory but i i did honestly right away in 91 become a sort of a raging green bay packer fan even though in 91 and 92 green bay was pretty terrible um so, so is yeah. that your favorite beer from indeed um it probably is um i'm not a big ipa fan but their ipa is 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 pretty good too their main their mainline ipa which of course right now the name is escaping me but they're they're their full release IPA is also very good. Um, but pretty much any brewery, if they make a, a porter or a stout, that's going to be my favorite one on their menu. Awesome. And then from right across the the river in Wisconsin, um, drinking the wheat whiskey from 45th Parallel Distillery, which I'm just a huge, I'm not, you know, they're not a sponsor. I'm just, I love their stuff. They And, and they're great people there too. They, so. they might be though. Yeah. Might, you never maybe. know. We'll see. <laughs> how long how long how long have they been around um i believe eight years if i'm not mistaken so they're right kind of sneaked in right before the the big distilling movement you know yeah. the craft if, distilling if, movement if, if by some miracle anybody from 45th parallels watching and i'm wrong on that i i sincerely apologize I, but uh, it's information that you would know if they sponsored your you your know, podcast. i probably i probably would know that so i'm just saying Right. Absolutely. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's interesting. You meant, you mentioned that you work in Minneapolis, but your, your partner who couldn't join us tonight, um, is actually from St. Paul. He's on the other side of the twin cities. And so you, you've started your project, which we'll get into in just a second here, uh, with, uh, with Garrett. So I definitely want to give him some props. We'll talk about him a little bit more in a second, but, uh, oh. so how, how did you guys, I mean, okay. The, the Twin Cities are, this is not a small place. <laughs> How did you guys uh, cross paths? Is it, is it the whole cigar thing or? It is the cigar thing. But the weird thing is we didn't meet for the first time in person. Um, he and I were both posting points on a cigar uh, discussion on a thread. And somehow, I, I and I honestly don't remember, it was um, five years ago. And we came to discover that we lived 25 miles away from each other right and and it also turned out that he and some friends of his had and still do we still do have this every wednesday night there's this thing called merch which a lot of times you hear merch well that stands for merchandise well for us it stands for man church so wednesday nights we get together and we smoke cigars and we talk about jesus and we talk about and we play cards and whatever else just kind of comes to mind. And he said, well, if you live in Forest Lake and I live in Woodbury, then we should get together and we do this thing every Wednesday night. So I showed up once and I've been friends with those guys ever since. Oh, that's, that's great, five, man. Five years ago. That's for, that's really great. I mean, I think we've teased the heck out of this. So let's talk about the the project that you guys that you and Garrett have launched now uh and done some sensational reviews some sensational material and launched your first podcast you have started your own cigar media outlet called how about that cigar uh as properly displayed on your shirt so 
So how about that cigar? How, so how about did this get started? I was trying to figure <laughs> out a way to not sound awkward when I was doing that intro, but I knew I was going to botch it anyway. So why the hell not? Yeah. Well, it, so the, the weird thing about how about that cigar is it, it just came to me as a stupid idea in my head. Um, I was sitting with friends smoking and I saw somebody who was, who just lit up something that I had been wanting to try. They just went in the humidor of the shop we were in and they picked one up, they lit it. And I said, well, I didn't even see those in there. I've been wanting to try it. And I said, how about that cigar? And ding, you know, it was like, you know, the light bulb went off and this idea went in my head. And this was the summer of 2015. And for whatever reason, I didn't really think a lot about it, but the very next morning I went online and I bought the domain name. Just, uh, I just, just on a whim, just on a whim. I bought the domain name. I thought, huh, maybe that'll, maybe that'll be something someday. Cause I thought, well, it's kind of a cool catchphrase. You know, it's not, yeah. it's not groundbreaking or anything, but it's kind of a cool catchphrase. And I think it's memorable. So I bought the domain name. That's crazy, yeah. man. Cause like, I mean, you hear that all the time. Like, how about this? How about that? You yeah. know, it's, it's a, it's a common euphemism in, in the American dialect. So it is. That's, and honestly, that's... especially in, and, and I know you're a, a massive baseball fan is it's, it's honestly one of the most common catchphrases or, or turns of phrase you'll ever hear from a baseball broadcaster. Well, it was Mel Allen's call. It was Mel. How Allen. about I, that? I even How... put that in, in the write up the, the first sort of introductory write up on the website saying, this is kind of what we're all about. Um, I put that in there about Mel Allen, because I always remember that as a kid that you know mel allen saying how about that you know and and it just it stuck with me ever since so that phrase came into my head one day in the cigar shop and the next morning for no reason whatsoever i just bought the domain name and sat on it for years before we talk about this a little bit further I, I, there is something i want to address matt because i got i gotta say man it when you just you 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 dropped it you dropped a hint earlier when you talked about when you talked about the cults moving into indianapolis and then you just said growing up with mel hearing mel allen and stuff I gotta tell you, man. Um, I I, I want to look as good as you when I grow up because you don't. I you look the same age as I do, uh, if not younger, actually. And when we first met at this last year's IPCPR, and you you know you you told me how I said, "Hey, how'd you get into cigars?" And you tell me your backstory. You're like, oh, "I was in the boom," and I'm like, "You smoke cigars in the cigar boom? Like, how <laughs> old are you?" And I I just I, was, I yeah, couldn't I believe it. I was six years old. You know, in the during the during the first cigar boom. See, no, I, okay, I, I see. I was older than that, at least, but I still wasn't of legal age. <laughs> no, I um, I, and by the way, just for any government officials who might be listening or watching, I do not endorse or condone underage smoking. None of us do, um, absolutely not. And it's eighteen or twenty-one, depending on who, where you are living in the territory yes. that you are living and watching this this podcast on Check or listening local regulations before buying or consuming any tobacco products or alcohol for that matter. But we all know that that's 21. So that, but yes, yeah. The tobacco thing's going to get confusing. <laughs> oh, it will really, really fast. Really, really quick. <laughs> but no, I, um, um, I just, I had a complete and utter loss of my train of thought. Oh, uh, I was talking about how you do not look the age that you are. No. Yeah. So it was, it's ironic that, um, when you, got in touch with me and you said hey do you want to be on the podcast i said yeah i'd love to and then you you sent out the notifier about it and it was take 71 and i thought well that's kind of appropriate because i was born in 71 so and i so i can't explain why i don't have gray hair and i'm not bald i'm not bragging about it i'm just grateful for it just, yeah just thank, have, thank the good lord man yeah that's, <laughs> that's the only thing i can do is say hey i'm i'm grateful and move on so I don't, I don't know why I have no, but who knows, maybe tomorrow morning I'll wake up and, you know, I'll, I'll look like, uh, you know, Father Christmas. I don't have a clue. I've got the, uh, I've got the impressive beard, but I've got a lot of uh, gray hair that's, that's sprouting in for sure. And, and the, the hair up top isn't what it used to be, which is uh, uh, not the reason why I'm so fond of hats. My fondness for hats goes back quite, quite a ways since, uh, since childhood. Yeah. I wasn't a hat guy until about, I don't know. Not my whole life. It's been since I've been married. So within the last 20 years is when I became a hat guy. I didn't really dig hats before. So you, you, on a whim, you, you buy the domain name 
yeah. it's just crazy to me. It goes to go back to it. So you're five years and you're no stranger to cigar media. You, you worked in cigar media for, um, for, uh, for, for just blind man's puff or did you work in a couple of other places as yeah, well? It was, it was just blind man's puff. And okay. honestly, I, I just became, so if my cigar story, if I go back to, um, so f a long time ago and, and for unfortunately too long, I was a cigarette smoker and thank God I'm away from that. I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, but in 96, um, well before 96, you know, I, I would buy a lot of, a, a lot of, um, what people perceived to be cigars, but they're not actually cigars. You know, it might be a, you know, it might be a flavored machine made something or other. And, uh, but then, you know, gradually graduated into, and I went to an actual tobacconist and I bought a, my first premium cigar. And of course I look back at it now and I think that was really kind of crazy how it happened because I, the first premium cigar I ever bought was a Davidoff. And most likely I got, I got hoodwinked by the guy who was working the, the counter uh, because he probably saw a live one and was like, Hey, I can, you know, get this guy to buy the most expensive cigar in the store. And he pretty much did, you know, this was 1996 and the cigar cost me just shy of 10 bucks, which in oh, 96 man. was outrageous. It was a Davidoff and it was a, yeah, it was a wonderful cigar. I really loved it. But then what I did, I was that guy who, and I think a lot of us know that guy who he buys, you know, maybe once a quarter or twice a year, he'll buy a handful of three or four cigars. If the guys are getting together, he'll smoke one or two, he'll give one or two away. He'll keep them in a Ziploc bag or he'll just throw them in a drawer in his, you know, his sock drawer and then smoke them, you know, over the course of three months or whatever it is. I didn't really think about it. And then, um, it was a number of years ago. Uh, I honestly don't even remember how many that I said, I'm finally going to try this. And I went and I bought a little humidor and I went and I bought a grab bag of cigars and threw them in there and just started learning. And what happened was when I did that, then I started getting into the forums and cigar, other cigar media and started learning as much as I could. And it was overnight that it just became this, this just full on time sink for me. And I started putting, so much attention and desire to learn more into it. And that kind of got me where I am today. It's uh, it's one of those things that um, the learning process, I, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Matt, but it, one of those things about cigar industry and cigars in general is the learning process for me almost became uh, uh, addictive. It, you know, yeah. just it, there's so many layers, yeah. you know, to to cigars you know no pun intended um but there's so many layers to cigars and the knowledge and the process and and you know i mean there's 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 men and women in this industry that are, they've forgotten more about tobacco than you and i will ever learn yeah. you know it's just it it i learn something new almost you know almost every week i won't say almost every day that's a little obnoxious but i mean it's on a weekly basis i probably learned something that i didn't know um and it's it, it's Man, it's just insatiable. I love it. Yeah. And so what I did was um, actually, a, a, I have to give a huge thank you to um, all the people over at Cigar Dojo because before I even knew and, and was lucky enough to get to, to get to know the people at Cigar Dojo, I just became a member on the app and in that mm -hmm. community. And I got to know people. And what it did was it opened my eyes to just thousands of different cigars out there in the marketplace that I could go and try. And, and it was great. You know, it, it, uh, gave me, um, it gave me a chance to see so many things that, that I hadn't tried before. And I can either go to my local shop and pick it up or I can buy it online and try it. Um, so the, the, the community that Dojo put together really helped me grow my, my experience in cigars. And then after, um, after a while, I, um, you know, I posted a few just very rudimentary personal reviews just because I wanted, I, I would try a cigar and, and really enjoy it and want other people to know about it. So I'd go on a certain, I'd go on a web forum, one of the many cigar web discussion forums that there are. And I'd say, Hey, here's this cigar that I smoked and here's what I thought about. It, and here's a few notes about it. And I put that on there. And then there was a, there was a call from uh, blind man's puff saying we're looking for people to 
uh, help us review, do the blind reviews of cigars. So I reached out and said, I'm interested if you, you know, if you'll have me and um, got in touch with Emmett and um, got involved with the site that way and then was given an opportunity to go and help cover the trade show, the IPCPR trade show. It just really built a relationship with Emmett and Zane and those guys over at Blind Man's Puff. And, uh, um, and it was my whole experience there was was great. Um, I love those guys. And it I learned so, so, so much, you know, from being at the trade show and just working on, you know, because blind tasting, it just really helps you hone in and kind of figure out where where you're hitting things and where you're missing things. And it was a really great experience for me. When you first started down that path of blind tasting, what was what was the biggest it may be obvious, but I, I just want to, I just want to hear it from you. What was the biggest challenge for you? Oh man. Um, well, I'd say the biggest, the biggest challenge was my own ego. It, and that's really the simplest way I can put it is because what I would do is I would, um, you know, I had certain preconceived notions about, um, you know, the way that I tasted cigars, but realizing that I always tasted cigars with part of the tasting aspect was, was mental. And that is, you know, seeing, seeing the band on the cigar, knowing what it is that I'm smoking and having certain ideas already about the brand or certain ideas already about the wrapper type or whatever it is. And early on realizing, oh, I think the wrapper on, you know, when I do a blind test, oh, I think the wrapper on this cigar is this and then i'd get the results of the blind review and i go hmm, yeah i wasn't right about that there was some of that tobacco in the filler but there wasn't the wrapper or or whatever it was and that kind of made me stop and and say wow i really don't have a i really don't have a clue you know and so it was and it also as far as the ego part of it goes i would think to myself as i'm smoking the cigar if this is a 30 dollar davidoff and i give it a 60 and I hate it, I'm gonna look like a fool. Or if this is a, a 50 cents um, machine made Al Capone, which obviously it wouldn't be, but if it was something along those sure. lines, you know, some really super dirt cheap, although there was one of those um, that I did a blind review on and, and I give it some crazy stupid high score, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna look like a fool. And But what I had to do after a while was I had to say, okay, I gotta take my ego out of this because I have to just stop worrying about what I'm gonna be perceived as as giving a you know a high score to a cheap cigar or a low score to an expensive cigar and just just taste the stupid thing and just you know be honest on paper with what I get out of it. And that actually kind of opened me up to just say, okay, I'm just gonna taste it for what it is and and go from there. And that helped me a lot. So what are you smoking tonight? Since uh, tonight, it's not blind. Um since um this was the first cigar actually that um i posted a review of on on how about that cigar and it's the mambacho casa favili so it's um and and that's kind of the reason i wanted to smoke it tonight just because this was the first ever cigar review to get posted on the site so so fast forward through, through this experience and your your story and cigars and everything so you and garrett launch how about that cigar uh earlier this year Right, it was early two thousand nineteen. It wasn't late yeah, two thousand eighteen. It, it, it was supposed to be late two thousand eighteen, but you know, you know how that goes. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, so early two thousand nineteen. So it's been up. Uh, it's been up for a little bit now, and you guys are doing some fantastic reviews. You published your first episode of your of your podcast, um, and it's 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 just getting started, man. So uh, so t what I kind of wanted to talk about was the focus of how about that cigar? What what you know, what's your what's your mission statement what did you want to accomplish what did you want to accomplish not necessarily don't uh, if you want to speak for garrett you certainly can uh but what did you want to accomplish with uh publishing this site yeah um well one of the things i knew right off the bat was i there are uh, already great cigar media outlets out there and and i would be well thank you no sorry go ahead yeah exactly well and and honestly you are one of the one of the 
newer voices in cigar media. And I told you this at IPCPR last year, so I'm, you know, I'm not saying anything you haven't heard before, but I, I'm grateful for what you're doing. You're doing a great job. And, but honestly, even going back to when I bought the domain name, I, um, you know, like I said, I was into Cigar Dojo. I, I, I had been reading Coop every day. I read Half Wheel every day. There are so many of these sites that I, I, I read every single day. They're on my tabs. As soon as I open up Chrome, automatically I've got a list of, you know, the same sites I read every single day. And there are so many great media outlets out there. I knew that I wasn't going to, um, I wasn't going to reinvent the wheel and I wasn't going to, you know, have some monumental life-changing experience in the cigar media outlet. But at the same time, I knew I had a voice and I thought that it was a, a voice that, you know, had, had something, um, unique to say. So what I did was after I bought the, I bought the domain name and I talked to, I actually, I was, I was scheduled to go on the, uh, on a cigar safari trip with Cigar Dojo. And that was in 2015. And, you know, I contacted Eric. I won't go into the particulars about what we talked about. This was, and again, this was right after I bought the domain name. So I kind of, I was thinking it, I was actually going to launch back then. And I brought up something to Eric and he came, he came back to me with a, with uh, something for me to think about. And I went, wow, yeah, that really kind of hits home. And it was, it was another one of those things that sort of hit me. Like I need to get my, I kind of need to get my ego under control before I move forward with any of this. I have a lot to learn. I have a lot of, you know, a lot of dues that I have to pay before I could even consider doing anything like this. So that's why I just sat on the domain name and just let it, just let it breathe. Um, so then I went in, you know, to do a bunch of learning and stuff like that. And one of the things I noticed over the years in the mostly online cigar media, print media is, is great. And I love print cigar magazines. I read them all the time. I subscribe to them, but it really is a different, a uh, different world, I think at least. And so when I would look at the, the, the online media outlets that I respected and read every day, um, one of the things that I noticed that was missing was sort of a foot in the past. And what I mean by that is, you know, you go back to the cigar boom of the early mid nineties when cigar aficionado came out and when, um, you know, the, the, the cigar boom was just everywhere. There were, um, I mean, the, the amount of cigars that were on the shelves back then was incredible. And, um, we're seeing a resurgence of that today. And one of the things that I noticed that was missing was a foot in the past. What most of the newer online cigar media outlets were doing was focusing on new, newly released cigars that have come out at the trade show or had come out within the last year. And I actually think that's a great thing um, because there are, there is such a, a, there's so much happening in this new, you know, 2010s 2020s leading into the future in this new cigar boom and there's so much happening although unfortunately it's a little bit under threat from fda but that's another conversation yeah it's an i was gonna say that's another take <laughs> <laughs> um, but i just saw something missing from the past because a lot of those cigars that got people into premium cigar smoking back in the day whether it was macanudo or Romeos or, um, you know, curly Fuente yeah, curly heads or Fonseca head. Fonseca's and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and a lot of those cigars, they're still, they, they still are, and they have been consistent sellers on cigar shop shelves for the last 25 years. And they're, they're consistent performers and they make, they make money for brick and mortar shops and they make money for the online retailers. And I thought to myself, there's a lot of those cigars are still, if you look at the dollar figures, they're still top sellers across the country year after year after year. Yeah. And a lot of guys who go, uh, guys and girls who go into cigar shops for the first time or buy their first five pack or, or sampler from their favorite online retailer, those samplers, those budget samplers, they're going to come with a lot of those classic brands in them. Mm -hmm. And 
the consumers were missing recent and fresh voices on those cigars too. And I, I love all the new stuff. I smoke, I smoke as much of the new stuff as I could get my hands on, but I think I just felt like the consumers were missing hearing a fresh new review or voice about those cigars that have been classics for all this time. And that's, that was the big twist that I wanted to put on it. And that's, that's where the phrase consumer focus comes from is that's what I was going to ask. Took the words out of my mouth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the vast majority of consumers, and I don't, I mean, there's got to be data somewhere. Um, this is just a sort of a gut thing is if you look at the best selling cigars like Macanudo, how many people, even, even today in 2019, do you think if they're going into a cigar shop and they're buying their first premium cigar, let's say in one year in let, let's say during the course of 2019, and I'm just making numbers up. Let's say there's 5 million people who try, who buy and try their first single premium cigar. Right. In 2019. Okay. How many of those 5 million are going to be brand new boutique brands, which I love. Right. And how many of them are going to be Macanudos, Undercrowns, Acids, um, Romeos, Curly Heads, um Hemingways that kind of thing right and I think or Ashton's or what you know whatever it is Ashton's no and that that group yeah that in that grouping yeah do you want me to answer the question or are you going to answer it no please go ahead uh 80 yeah. percent and I think and I think I'm being I think I'm I think I'm underselling it I think it's probably closer to 90 and that's kind of the thought that popped into my head when I had you know the the catchphrase popped into my head I bought the domain name but then I thought I kept coming back to these cigars that are kind of forgotten honestly and and it's i understand when somebody would say well yeah but that cigar has been reviewed a hundred times in cigar aficionado and it's probably been on you know a hundred blogs over the course of the last 25 years yep you're totally right and i completely agree but there i think there still has to be a fresh take on those take to steal your word a fresh <laughs> take on those cigars today in 2019 and sure. going forward and that was that was something I wanted to do, and yeah, and that that's something that I was really wanted to ask you. And I'm glad you, I'm glad you 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 perfectly segued into it, Matt. Was just like you know when you say consumer base, like or consumer focus, like what does that mean? And and I think that illustrates a beautiful point. The fact that you know you know the the folks that are you know my my terrific audience that's listening to this podcast or watching us live right now, and a lot of your new you know a lot of your your fans too are the guys that the guys and gals that, that do smoke that, that heavy boutique stuff. And you're, you're still going to cover that, like, as you said, but yeah. you're also going to be going back and, and, and really trying to rein in those folks that don't consume a lot of cigar media. And I think that's going to be great because they are going to be look, guess what? They are going to be looking up, you know, when they, when they go into the shop and they, they light up their first cigar and it's a Macanudo. Yeah. They are going to be look they're going to, and it's going to, and it's going to blow their top off and they're going to be so excited about it. They're going to Google it. Or they're going to search engine, or they're going to check it out on the internet. And who's you know yeah, who's talking right. about this Macanudo? And the most recent post is going to be how about that cigar? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and it's so the um somebody brought up to me, and it's somebody who wasn't doesn't have a vested interest. It's somebody who's not in not in cigar media, but they said, "Do you think that? Do you think that that?" Uh, um, that byline is going to piss people off. And I said, what do you mean? They said, consumer focused cigar info and entertainment. Do you think that's going to piss people off? I said, well, who's it going to piss off? He said, what about the two dozen other cigar media sites that are out there? He said, don't they feel like they're consumer focused? I said, well, of course they're consumer focused. That's not that uh, that's so that, and, and uh, he said that to me and it went, wow, that I kind of get where he's coming from. So that was that was not never my intent was to say that other cigar media sites are not consumer focused. In your defense, uh, it doesn't say the consumer focused. Yeah, so. well, yeah. <laughs> that man, if I would have put that, it'd be like yeah, speaking of keeping know. egos in check. But <laughs> totally, you know, uh, it was it was consumer focused from the standpoint of, um, you know, like I said before, just taking those cigars that are that are classics and the ones that are consistent bestsellers and keeping them in the, keeping them in the, the public conversation. 
So in in preparation for this, I, I wanted to kind of look at my uh, my consumption of cigars in the last uh, six months. And one of my one of my goals, um, probably within the last calendar years, you know, I work as as many people know, I work in I work in a retail shop at Michael's Tobacco here in Euless, Texas, and um, one of my goals um, it was actually instilled into me by my general manager. Uh, Tracy Spence. And he said, you know, he's like, I want, you know, and he, he said this to me from the beginning, this isn't a recent phenomenon. And so I've always kind of drifted around the humidor quite a bit. Cause he want, you know, he wants us to know the products that are in them, but you know, like, you know, like what we were talking about, Matt, you know, I fell victim to is, you know, the stuff that was kind of new and, and things like that. And just getting really excited about it. And then there's plenty to be excited about. That's, that's nothing. And I still get excited about new stuff and I still get excited about, uh, a lot of the boutique stuff, but there are a lot of my favorites that have been around for a number of years now that I still smoke a lot because I really enjoy them. They're and they're they're fantastic. Um, but I wanted to really go back to the vault, so to speak. In the yeah. last six months, I've really kind of focused. So um, I made a list of cigars that I um, that I've consumed actually just in the last few weeks that I, you know I hadn't in, in recent memory. It's probably in a couple of cases. It's probably been a year. Uh, one of them was the Macanudo Hyde Park. Yeah. Um, one of them was some Hoya de, uh, Hoya de Monterey Excalibur number three. Um, the uh, Arturo Fuente uh, Hemingway uh, bestseller. Um, I've had the bestseller Maduro recently, but not the bestseller. Um, Romeo and Julieta Habano, uh, the Corona. Um, the and uh, there's obviously a trend here. Uh, Arturo Fuente, curly head. I mentioned that earlier. Um, and um, Ashton uh, Cabinet. Yeah. And that's on my, that's on my uh, list for it'll be it'll be posted soon. Fantastic. I and I gotta say, out of and all those cigars that I mentioned, um, even the Macanudo which I've been kind of uh, uh, unfair to them. I, I'll be a hundred percent honest. Uh, I've been unfair to them in, in, in many years uh, in, in recent years, just cause um, you know, it's, it's the, it's the classic cigar. It's one of the number one selling cigars uh, out there. Um, a terrific history. Of what general's done with them has just been incredible, but you know, I, I kind of, like I said, I've been unfair to them. I've, I've just, I've, I've used them as kind of the, the punchline or the footnote, you know, when I'm yeah. talking about uh, cigars in general and even mild cigars, you know, and when I revisited the Hyde Park, it was really um, unexpected how, how much I actually, I actually did enjoy it. Um, it, it now, you know, to be fair now, is it a cigar that, you know, that just completely blew me away? I'm like, Oh, I was totally wrong about this. I'm going to go back to it constantly. No, it wasn't that by six boxes of it. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't yeah. that, but at the same time, it, it, it took me, um, it, it allowed me to appreciate it again, you know, yeah. going into, going into these classics, so to speak, or going into the vault, however you want to characterize it. Um, you know, it, it's a nice, it's a nice little nostalgic trip for yeah. one and two it it if you remove that stigma like you said if you remove the preconceived notion no this isn't blind yeah but if you just kind of say you know what i'm gonna i'm just gonna give it its due man it's yeah. been around for 20 plus years my god it something's right you know something's right about it and, and in those 25 years how many years has the macanudo not been in the top 10 bestsellers uh for the year oh it's I, I don't zero know, i don't think it's ever missed the top no, 10. probably yeah. not yeah no absolutely not and you know like you said an asset's another one drew estate's done an incredible job with that brand um you know and you know in few cigars and you know flavored cigars i've, I've said plenty of times are, are not really my bag um but if you if you just again just strip down your 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 the stigma and your preconceived notion of it and just enjoy it for what it is and look at the the process that like for example drew estate uh miami cigar company tatiana does um you know pdr just uh released uh uh their their cafe series so like the dark roast medium roast light roast those are you know via havana is another small company that does uh, a dolce which you know does incredibly well at our shop and actually 
tastes really good. Yeah. Um, when you just kind of look at the process, um, and what they've accomplished within that, you know, that, that narrow minded zone, it's, it, it's pretty impressive, you know, like yeah, if you absolutely. just, just look at it from a, you know, from a, a different, a different perspective, you look at it from a different take, uh, yeah. to use my own line again. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's one of those things. So like when you go, when you kind of, is that the approach that you're kind of wanting to take is, is not, not the proverbial literal blind tasting, but maybe blind conceived notion. That's what I'm trying to do. I mean, okay. the fact is any of us, if we, if we use our eyes and we know what the brand is, as, as hard as we try not to, we are going to have some preconceived notions about the brand. We may even have preconceived notions about that particular cigar. You know, maybe we tried it once and we didn't like it. Maybe, maybe it's a brand that's, you know, has that stigma hanging over it that says, oh, this is a, this is just a catalog brand or whatever it is. But I just want to try to remove all that from it. And it's not, you know, it, while that is part of the consumer focus of how about that cigar, it's, it's not the only thing we do, you know, it's, I, I keep those separate in what's called a flashback review. So those are reviews of cigars that are, that are classics. And the, the, the rule is that I put on paper a long time ago, and I'm going to try to stick to it. The rule is it's got to be a premium cigar that has been, um, that has been on the market for at least 10 years consistently. And there are so many cigars. I mean, I thought for a while about doing 20 years, but that's a little tougher. I mean, it's possible, but I thought the list is going to get shorter and shorter as, as yeah. time goes on. So I thought 10 years is a good market because, you know, there's there's a lot of guys as they get into the cigar market, they start with the Macanudos, they start with the curly heads, and then they move into the boutique stuff if if they choose to. And... um chances are that 10 years it just felt like a good marker it felt like a good time because there are so many cigars that are still consistently that have been on the market non-stop for those 10 years or more mm -hmm. and are still great sellers and still consistent for the most part consistent cigars well it's interesting how fast paced this industry moves in terms of like that quote unquote age so i think 10 years is a great barometer because I, a cigar just popped in my head that you would consider old yeah, because it's been out for a, a while. Is the Drew? We're talking about Drew Estate. We're talking. About, I was going to mention the Nicarustica. Yeah, and I, the the year escapes me off the top of my head, but I know for a fact it's not ten years old. I think it was two thousand thirteen. Yeah, I can't say for sure. I think that's that's that, sound, that, that sounds right. So six yeah. years. So yeah, yeah, on the on on the on the way to ten, and but it's not I, ten years older. And, and you're totally right when you say that that from from a we're cigar nerds, you know. We, we, we just love to learn everything we can about it. So for us, a cigar that came out at the trade show last year, or not last year, a cigar that came out at the trade show two years ago, it's already an old cigar. Yeah. And, but for a lot of smokers, they still haven't smoked stuff that came out six years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago. You know, they still haven't tried it yet because for whatever reason, you know, they're, they're stuck with the brand that they've, you know, they, they're going to dance with the, you know, the one that brought them. And what am so if I can give them, if I can give them a revisit of some of the classic brands while also showing them some of the newer stuff, then that's what I want to try to do. You know, I had Omar DeFrias from Fratello Cigars on a few weeks ago, and he said one of his favorite things is when people say, hey, what's new, what's new? And, yeah. you know, he's been fortunate in a fortunate position where he actually has released a new cigar almost every year for the last couple of years. But he, he, he asked one of his consumers one time, he's like, Hey, when was the last time you had the Fratello Classico? It's like, Oh, it's been a few years. It's been a couple of years. It's like, well, it's probably new to you. Yeah. And at this point, and that's a, and that's a, that's a brilliant point. Cause like one of my favorite things to do uh, in the retail sector is get a guy who smokes the classics, the Macanudos, yeah. the Ashton's, and not to get him away from that, but to get him to try something different, because there's yeah. so many creatures of habit in this industry, in from the consumers that, that you're that you're trying to that you are trying to lay siege to, they are creatures of habit. 
They've been yeah. smoking Macanudos for 25 years. They've been smoking Romeo and Julietas since the 70s. They've been smoking this since, you know, since the, since the cigar boom. They started five years ago and they found a cigar and it may be even considered boutique, but that's the only cigar that they, they smoke. Yeah. And my favorite thing to do is to get them to try something different. Likewise, my new favorite thing with, to go with my mission for the last six months, which is to revisit those classics, yeah. is to get someone who's really nerdy like us <laughs> and be like, hey, try this Ashton White label. Man, come on, man. Everyone knows what that does. Do you know what it tastes like? Because when was the last time you had one? Exactly. You know, and so that's kind of my also my my, you know, my my new latest favorite thing to do is is get the nerd like us to try something that they wouldn't try or have tried so long ago that they've forgotten about it because truth be told we have too and that's yeah. a that's a that's a great point well i always for the last many years i've always used beer or other types of alcoholic beverages as a analogy or as trying to trying to use it as a parallel because it actually does work a lot so if you look at so let's say you've got a 21 year old you know on their 21st birthday who by some miracle never consumed any alcohol before their 21st birthday which is rare these days but it happens sure let's, let's say and you know this uh this 21 year old is going to reach for a coors light or they're going to reach for a miller light or they're going to oh god for forbid it. yeah god forbid <laughs> but it's gonna it, it happens and um they're gonna try that and it, but the what i'm what i'm getting at is the vast majority of people who drink their first beer it's not going to be a stir crazy porter from indeed it's not right. going to be a 10 fitty it's not going to be uh you know a lagunitas it's 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 just not it's going to be one of the big brands and the same is true for cigars right the nine times out of ten their first cigar and honestly if a first time of age cigar smoker is going to try their first premium cigar. I think it's great if it's going to be one of the tiny little awesome unique boutique brands. I think that's fantastic. But chances are low. It's just a fact. Chances are low that that's going to be the case. Well, of numbers, so, man. They're they're before they step foot into the cigar shop, they're like, "Hey, I want to try a cigar." They're going to talk to their friends, they're going to talk to their family. Yeah, they're exactly. going to talk to their grandfather. And what is their grandfather smoking? Their grandfather's going to say, "Oh, you got to get this Ashton Classic." It's got this white band on it. It's smooth and creamy and it's just, it, you know, it just, it's nice and mild. You'll love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I've been smoking them for 15 years. They're great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's, and the thing is with somebody who is going to have their first beer, having a Coors Light versus having a really top quality craft brewed Pilsner, um, you know, that, that's, that is what it is. But if you're going to bring in the, somebody who having their first premium cigar and you're going to say, smoke this Macanudo Hyde Park or smoke this LFD chisel. Are you trying to kill the guy? I mean, you, maybe ease him into it a little bit, you know? Yeah. And, and then at the same time, from the, from the, using the alcohol analogy, I look at uh, fruity flavored drinks like margaritas and daiquiris and that kind of stuff. Those are your acids. Those are your, your upsetters. Those are your, Tayback Especiales. Those are your infused flavored cigars. And a lot of people love them. And mm -hmm. who am I to say you're not supposed to love that cigar because X, Y, and Z reasons. If you like margaritas, drink margaritas. If you like acids, smoke acids. And I, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to be reviewing any acids on the site. It's possible. I do on occasion smoke. They meet that 10-year rule. But, yeah. Some so I I do in, I I do on occasion smoke infused cigars. It's rare, but I do from time to time. So we'll see. But I think the I think the liquor and beer analogy works well with cigars. No, that definitely holds up for sure. I think um I think it's a I think it's a fantastic mission statement. And I um uh, no disrespect to your friend. I I think I think it was a valid point that he brought up. But I think it was also uh, I think you are going about it in a, in a less egregious way that, that he was worried about, um, you know, as far as the, you know, consumer basis, you know, consumer based, uh, website versus the other cigar media outlets that are out there like myself, coop half wheel, um, blind man's puff. You mentioned a few others. Uh, and of course, dojo as well. And I think the, the, what's really interesting too, is this is just another, again, not to use my own word, but to 
and I, it's not like I have a trademark on it, but you, what's interesting about all these different media outlets is they all have their different take. They all have their different audience. Yes, there are, there are a lot of similars. As you mentioned, you're a consumer of a lot of them. I'm a consumer of a lot of them. And, um, and I enjoy them for different reasons. And, and so this is just another reason for a, consar- a cigar consumer to, to, to enjoy a, a different outlook of, of the industry that they, that they enjoy. So, yeah. Um, and another thing just really quick for consumers that, that I wanted to do, and you can get this from, from cigar aficionado where they'll do write-ups on, on, um, uh, favorable cigar lounges. You know, if you're traveling to Houston or Atlanta or Dubai or wherever it is, you know, these are the places you should go and smoke. And I read those articles in CA all the time and I think they're great. But one of the things they tend to lean towards just because cigar aficionado is a lifestyle magazine and by lifestyle magazine, I mean, rich lifestyle magazine, you know, let's call it for what it is. And that's fine. They, they do a great job at what they do, but I wanted to, so we have a a section called cigar destinations that is, um, it's basically what I want it to be. And it will eventually become is a place where people can go and find out, okay, I'm, I'm going to a sales conference in Cleveland or Bismarck in, you know, June, and I want to know where to go to smoke and not just where to go to smoke. I want a place that's cool and it's got a kind of a nice vibe and isn't pretentious or isn't whatever. And and honestly, even maybe some of those places will be pretentious, but they'll still be, they'll be pretentious, but they'll be approachable, which sounds like an oxymoron, but there are pretentious places that are still approachable. Actually, the first place we did a write up on was Biggs Mansion in Chicago. Um, Mm -hmm. Great piece. It's a, it's a super, it was the first time I had ever been there. So I was going in there with, with fresh eyes and the place is, yes, it's pretentious, but it's still approachable. The people there are super cool. It's, it's just, you know, they're just, they're just regular people. And that's one of the great things about, you know, this industry is the people who consume the products, the people who sell the products, the people who make the products, people who grow the tobacco, they're just such great people. And you can go into a place that's sort of fancy like bigs, but still be, still feel like you're at home, still feel like you are part of the cigar crowd. You are at home when you're here. And then there, there's going to be another one coming up soon um, that, that we actually had um, um, a write up for a place uh, on the East coast. And that's going to be coming within the next week is going to be published. And this is one of those places that on the surface seems sort of like a hole in the wall, but it's one of those hometown friendly smoke shops that you just as soon as you walk in the door you think to yourself yeah this is this is my place these i could do this i'm home i could do this yeah you know uh pretentious but approachable i've heard that's how jj fox is in london yeah Um, you know there are so many places i hope to go to jj someday i hope to go to so many places but jj's is definitely one of the jj fox is one of the places i've heard so many good things about Casa de Habanos in Nuremberg, just off the square, the main square where they have their famed uh, Christmas market, is one of those places like that was uh, the staff was insanely pretentious, um, which is interesting because it's a it's a tourist destination. It's right there in one of the most populated tar- tourist areas, and so I guess they're used to turning and burning. I guess. Oh yeah. But there's a lot of folks that were in there, and I, I sat down for a second with my brother-in-law and just kind of talked to a couple of the guys that were there. I mean, it, like again, pretend to all get out. Everyone's in a suit, hmm. you know. I'm, you know, it's December, so I'm, you know, in my pea coat and beanie and freezing, <laughs> and uh, and um, being from Texas and also, I mean, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, 25 degrees. So I was, you know, basically like, you know, the winter ap- apocalypse for me. So, um. <laughs> And I love cold weather too, for that fact, for that matter. But um, talking to a couple of those guys that were in there, that, that and I, I loved the every time I, you know, I would introduce myself in German, and and then I would say, "Do you speak in the English?" And the answer is always the same. Sure, like didn't matter if they were in the hospitality industry or if they were just a guy on the street. Sure, and then they, and of course speak great English. And the the couple of the uh, the patrons are just just really cool people and. Yeah. And so it it wiped off that that negative experience that was you know that pretentiousness really quick, um, and they were just happy to talk to me, happy to talk about they were smoking, why they loved going there, even though they were they were you know they were locals, and yeah, 
um, it was, it was a really, really cool experience and everything. So that's a really cool bit that you guys are doing. Um, really excited to see where that, that course takes you really excited to see where, how about that cigar goes, uh, in the coming months and, and, and hopefully years to come. So, um, want to wrap this up with, uh, with a couple last questions. The first question is, so, you know, obviously you didn't start this to end it quickly. This is uh this is, this is the long game. And this is something that you want to build into something. Um, where where does where does how about that cigar fit uh, into the cigar media landscape in a decade? Well, I mean, it's one of the things I've learned from from guys like Coop and and Half Wheel is uh, and the other guys too, but but Coop and Half Wheel have been doing it for so long is consistency. You know, if you if you're if you're fortunate enough to get consumers who who like the stuff that you write and like the reviews that you do and like the things that you have to say and if they if they resonate with the things that you say that then if you don't give them consistent content to to consume then you're going to lose them and that's that's what i want to do that's my my number one goal is to just make sure that i try to at some form have some kind of consistency you know, to give, give content as often as I can. Um, I don't have a formula set right now. I mean, I have lots of grandiose ideas for how often I want to post things, but, um, you know, I, I, I had a lot of false starts and I had a lot of learning curve and, you know, I learned a lot about myself and a lot, a lot about the process of, you know, starting a website from scratch and all this stuff. Um, but, that's the biggest thing I want to do is, is give them consistent content that they can read and learn something new. Um, and beyond that, um, I know that new pieces are going to come along. I honestly, uh, all the content or all the, all the different segments or sections of how about that cigar are pretty much set right now. Um, there may be more, you know, different segments, different, we decide that we're going to add a whole new section of the website and focus, you know, doing, do another regular feature on this, uh, who knows what it might be. But right now it's doing every, you know, doing everyday cigar reviews, more focusing on uh, things that are um, things that are newer and fresher to the market. The flashback cigar reviews that are focusing on classics that have been on the market for a long time, cigar destinations, um, I'm trying to get out as many press releases as I can. I, I try to build those relationships with, with the, the digital marketing managers and people who send out those press releases so that I can sure. join with the rest of cigar. Because I think it's important for people who are cigar consumers to know what's coming out on the market and things like that. Um, there are, in the beginning, there are going to be plenty that I miss because I haven't, I haven't built those relationships yet to get on those lists so that I can publish those press releases. Um, but um, there, the, the, the great part about that is there are so many outlets where you can go that they post those things consistently and you go to blind man's puff. You can go to half wheel, you can go to coop, you can go to developing pallets. You can go to so many different places that you can get that content and find out about the new stuff. And especially half wheel. I mean, when it comes to, um, legislative materials, the, that's one of the reasons that I read half wheel every single day is because they have their finger on the pulse of the, of the legislative stuff. It's always mm -hmm. there. And that's one of the main reasons I go there every day. Yeah. They do a terrific job with that. And you want to talk about consistency and you want to model after someone, you, you know, he, yes, you know, I, I'm biased because he is my partner on cigar coop primetime special edition, but coop is just a tremendous, uh, model of consistency. Um, and, uh, because I mean, he posts every day. He's got a just a ginormous streak going. He's going into, I believe, his sixth year with it. It's 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 insane, um, and uh, he, he's just he's just on an incredible run with that. And the guy doesn't sleep, so that that's kind of to be expected. But <laughs> well, and the stuff that uh, he writes is easy to read, and mm -hmm. it's, it's informative, and it's it's got a good, um, it's it's got a good thought process behind. It. You can tell when you read it that he didn't just copy and paste. You can tell yes. what's behind it. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's that's one of my favorite things about Coop is that he, he puts his own spin on everything, on everything, including press releases and stuff. He's he's really great about that. And his cigar reviews are 
very, very readable. I, you know, I'm, you know, I often lament with him that, that I do have a certain audacity to myself as well. And I do, uh, put a little bit of the, the bear panache on there, uh, on my reviews that I write for cigar dojo, but, um, cause I'll ask for his feedback and he'll be like, well, I wouldn't have used that, that terminology or that word. I'm like, yeah, but that's me. He's like, yeah, and that's you. That's what makes you you. So, um, and, uh, but he, he, yeah, consistency, great person to model after. And uh, so everyone needs to check out how about that cigar for yeah. their their flashback reviews and for the reviews on newer stuff as well. And the cigar destinations thing sounds freaking awesome. That's going to be a great project to definitely follow. And you guys are launching a podcast too. Did your first episode yeah. um, as well. So more episodes to come on that. My last question to wrap this up, Matt, and I, you, um, you're – no, no teasers of all, you know, you know, the question and everything, but it's, uh, it's always customary for me. It's been customary for me to kind of throw a last minute kind of fun curveball question at the end. So having just launched your first, you know, this, this website from scratch and uh, building this, this project from the ground up with, uh, with your partner, Garrett Robinson, um, if you could uh, start a website uh, about a, um, a subject matter or an item or anything at all that you're interested in, but ne nece don't necessarily know anything about at this moment in time, what would it be? Um, well, if, if, if I'm being honest, if I had to say, if, if it was, um, launching a new website, I wouldn't do anything at all because I've learned from doing how about that cigar that launching a new website is extremely painful and very difficult. So you told me your answer before the show. I was like, don't no. change it, man. Don't change it. Please. Any, <laughs> anybody, anybody who has ever started a website, I, I hats off to you and God bless you because it is a pain in the ass. It, it, I, I, I have learned my lesson that, that, you know, it's, it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination, especially when you're starting from scratch, even when you have, you know, uh you know great templates to work off of and things like that it's never easy um but if i had to um i'm a i'm a musician um my college degrees in music um and i was always a i mean i was fortunate with my parents to get get exposed to and get enthralled with every style of music you can possibly imagine my entire life growing up um but i was always um I focused mainly on jazz music when I was in college. And if, if I was to, you know, write some kind of a blog, it would probably be about, um, the great, um, you know, the great jazz singers from, from back in the early days of ragtime all the way up to today. Um, so another because, flashback kind of style. Yeah. That's another, cool. another flashback. Um, and if it wasn't that, it would be, how about that jazz singer? How about that jazz singer exactly and if it wasn't that it'd be making furniture because I've, I've been a woodworker for a long time and although i've been out of it for a while and i haven't you know i sold all my tools a long time ago if i ever am able to get back into making furniture again and things like that i would love to because it's it's always been something i loved and it would be nice to make some more pieces again someday well, Matt, really appreciate your time this evening. Uh, I know you've got a family. And so uh, anytime, every guest that comes on my show, I really appreciate their time because they're giving away uh, their Sunday evening. Uh, while kids may be in bed and stuff like that, it's still uh, the last chance to relax before a hard uh, working week ahead of them. So I, I greatly appreciate your time. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm really looking forward, like I said, to uh, seeing how about that cigar grow and develop these projects that you're putting together with uh, your partner, Garrett Robinson. Uh, so shout out to Garrett for who couldn't join us tonight, but uh, um, perhaps we can have the two of you back again here in the future. Uh, best of luck in the coming months. Hope to see you at some upcoming events as well. And again, just really appreciate your time. Yeah, Bear, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All, all the guys who watch and listen, uh, thanks for, you know, thanks for listening to what we have to say today. And, and if you get a chance, check out the website, check us out on Twitter and, and Instagram HBT cigar. And, and we'd love to, you know, get your feedback on what we're doing. Thank you so much. And we appreciate all of your feedback. So if you are listening to this podcast uh, or watching us on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate it. Uh, and leave us a review. Uh, cause we gotta, you know, you gotta tell us what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong and uh, really appreciate your take not just my takes. So I want to hear what you have to say. Uh, I hear it's actually a pretty cool thing if you actually unsubscribe, but don't forget to resubscribe because that actually 
keeps us at the top of, of lists and stuff and, and relevant in the in the in the eye of, of consumers. So I uh, really appreciate all your likes, shares, comments, and feedback. And if you are listening to us on any of your favorite podcast formats, tune in, Podbeam, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, name it. We're playing there and we are you are brought to you by exclusively Cornelius and Anthony Premium Cigars. So we really appreciate them. As always, this has been our 71st take on LOS from our takes. He's Matt Ty. I'm Barry Duplissy. We'll see you next time.